Omsum was out for a walk on a chilly morning when suddenly he sniffled. A drop trickled from his nose, and then another. His nose wouldn't stop running. Surprised, he wondered, why does our nose run? Determined to find out, Amsam shrank and entered his own body. He landed inside the nose. The place was warm, moist, and lined with tiny hairs and soft pink tissue. Huh? Around him, the air that entered through the nostrils was cold and dry. The inner walls immediately began to react. Omsum huh? noticed special glands producing thin mucus that coated the passageways, making the air moist before it traveled to the lungs. As the chilly wind continued to blow outside, the glands worked faster. They released extra mucus to warm and humidify the cold air and some of it overflowed, dripping out of the nose. That was one reason the nose ran in cold weather. But suddenly, a few dust particles entered through the nostrils. The tiny hairs, called cilia, began to wave quickly, trying to push them out. Aumsum saw mucus traps forming around the dust to stop it from reaching deeper into the body. The extra mucus mixed with the trapped particles and was pushed outward. That made the nose run even more. Leaping back outside, Omsum smiled proudly. <laughs> Omsum was enjoying a huge scoop of ice cream on a hot summer day. It was cold, creamy, Ooh. and perfect. Until suddenly, he froze. A sharp pain <gasps> shot through his head right behind his eyes. He grabbed his forehead and winced. Aumsum wondered, why do we get a brain freeze? Determined to find out, Aumsum shrank and entered his own body. He landed inside the mouth where the cold ice cream was still melting. The chill was spreading quickly across the roof of his mouth, an area called the palate. Tiny blood vessels lined its surface. The cold air and ice caused the vessels to shrink suddenly reducing the blood flow. But as soon as the cold began to fade, the vessels widened again, this time huh? too quickly. The sudden expansion caused a burst of pressure that traveled through the nerves. These nerves didn't just stop at the mouth. They connected directly to the head, especially to the trigeminal nerve, one of the main pathways that carries facial sensations to the brain. When the cold signal reached the brain, huh? it got confused. The brain couldn't tell whether the pain was coming from the mouth or the head, so it interpreted it as pain inside the forehead. That was the sudden stabbing pain known as a brain freeze. Leaping back outside, Omsum smiled proudly. Omsum was lying on the grass one afternoon, gazing at the sky. <laughs> It stretched endlessly above him, painted in the brightest blue. He tilted his head and wondered, why does the sky appear blue? His curiosity sparked, and with a blink, Amsam soared upward, racing through the air. He rose higher and higher until he found himself inside the atmosphere, surrounded by swirling particles of air and gas. Sunlight streamed in, dazzling and white. As he floated among the particles, beams of sunlight broke apart around him. Red, orange, yellow, green and blue light scattered in different directions. But then, Aumsum noticed something special. The blue light rays were bouncing more wildly than all the others. Tiny air particles pushed them this way and that scattering them across the sky. That's when he realized the truth. Huh? Sunlight looked white, but it was actually made up of many colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Red light had long, stretched out waves, while blue light had short, tiny waves. The tiny particles in the air were better at bouncing the short waves in every direction. So when sunlight entered the atmosphere, the red and yellow waves mostly passed straight through. But the blue waves 
scattered wildly. That was why the whole sky looked blue. 